<laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome back. This is Olive. She's drooling. Our, oh, Loki just jumped on the door. Say hello, Olive. And why are you drooling? That's how she shows love. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. This is Olive, a rescue cat. We think it is the granddaughter of a cat that we had years ago. Mm -hmm. She looks just like him. Like, also a rescue. Similar. Yeah. This is Misha, my wife, and a nurse, and a breastfeeding consultant, and a health coach. Counselor. Breastfeeding counselor. Counselor. Sorry. That matters, apparently. This is Monday Night Live. Welcome back. Or welcome. If you're new, if you're new, let us know in the comments section. Yeah, type new in the comments. I want to see. We you. do this most Monday nights, almost every Monday night. We answer as many questions as possible. And this is for education and entertainment. This is not medical advice because this is YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. And ugh. you're live on Twitter right yeah. now. How does that make you feel? I hate X Twitter. Extra. Uh, we don't want anybody to be shy. Shyness is not allowed here. If you have a thought, a question, a comment, put it in, put it in the comments. It's easy. You just type it in and hit enter. Wait, wait. Jeanette has a good question. Where did you go, Jeanette? I want to put it up. Nisha, is it hard to get pregnant on keto? No. <laughs> Apparently, it's hard to not get pregnant on keto. Uh, yeah. Eating <clears throat> a high-fat, high-nutrient, dense way of eating is a great way for your body to be happy and fertile and many many mm. many women in this community have mm -hmm. gotten pregnant on accident yes. and including myself <laughs> and gotten pregnant with a planned pregnancy if they were struggling with fertility issues so no it is not hard to get pregnant on keto in fact it is yeah very very years ago when i was promising. just starting to recommend keto to patients I had two patients. One was a 48-year-old female. One was a 51-year-old female. And after a few months on keto, they came to the office, not on the same day, came for their schedule follow-up pregnant. One was very excited about this. The other was not excited at all. And that's when I first started to realize, I think there's more to this than just weight loss. And yeah. so there's actually fertility specialists now who are recommending keto or ketovore or carnivore uh, for their women patients their female patients who are having trouble getting pregnant. Yeah, I actually had to do fertility treatments to get pregnant with our first baby, Beckett. And then two years after I had him, mm -hmm. we had a natural surprise yeah. pregnancy. And all I did was I looked at Nisha and I said, hey, how you doing? That's it. Knocked up. That's it. That's yeah. all it took. And she's the most beautiful, perfect little thing in the whole world. If yeah. you want to see our kids, you can come over to my channel where I show living the proper human life uh, vlogs. We will be in Vegas this week. Are yes. you guys excited? We're going to have behind the scenes videos, um, live streams inside of our community if we have time. And I'll be vlogging that whole experience. My first time in Vegas mm -hmm. is Third? Third. Third time thing? Yeah. If you if you want to come to Vegas and see us, this is the website. I think they still have tickets available. Mm -hmm. You can come. They there there's the the turnout has been so huge they've actually had to get a bigger venue. Crazy. They had no idea that there was this much interest in citizen scientry. It's also science, the most science reasonably history. priced of all the events. It's the ticket started at twenty five dollars and that money goes towards uh, supporting the research that the citizen science yep. collaboration so does. Come to Vegas and let's take an Ussie. Hey, baby, let's go to Vegas. Kiss a single life goodbye. Yeah. That's free of charge. You're welcome. Nice, nice. No charge for that. I love that. <laughs> All right. All right, let's to get these. to the questions. You guys got some questions. We got some answers. We got. Let me find a question here. In the... Ricardo. I see Ricardo. Okay. No? Oh, okay. oh, I didn't see. Vishnu, doctor, your book says nuts and leafy greens, kale is good for, to have. I'm dumbfounded. Also, what's the word charcuterie? Is that, is it a no problem thing? So the live my doctor told me is going to be re-released a new addition to have addendums to these type of claims because this mm. was six years ago that yeah. he wrote this book. So, And I think there's still many people out there who can eat nuts and leafy greens just fine. Uh, there's a spectrum of a proper human diet that ranges from low carb to keto to ketovore to carnivore. 
I have to be as close to carnivore as possible to keep uh, my waistline where it needs to be, to keep the, the bathroom scale where it needs to be, and to keep my lab numbers where they need to be. This beautiful specimen of Homo sapiens sapien to my left, you're right, doesn't have to do that. She can she can eat occasional nuts and occasional greens and occasional <clears throat> stuff, and she does just fine. And yeah, there's a spectrum. There's not just one specific diet for every human. We, now, go ahead. We do recommend 90 days of a carnivore elimination diet. Yes. To understand where you fall on the spectrum, we teach this in the community all the time. We have many, many people who have done that challenge self experiment. N equals one, mm -hmm. if you will. Thank you to Dave Feldman for that. And they see a lot of success because it takes getting rid of all the junk to see just where you fall when you reintroduce it, how your body's going to react to those things. Charcuterie boards yes. are I'm amazing. Not, I'm not sure the etymology of the word charcuterie. I would guess it means chopped up meat. <laughs> um, we don't do those often, usually no. at Christmas time we love or at it. a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. But if you'd like to drop one by, we will definitely take it. <laughs> yeah. And when you guys hear us talk about our community or our tribe, uh, this is the web address. It's just phd.community. No, it's not. It's phdhealth. I'm sorry, phdhealth.community. And actually, I think you can get a free trial, like 14 days for free, if you go go to phdtrial.com. Is that in the description? That would be I don't think so. I, I don't think I've added that yet. I don't think I've added okay. that. Um, okay, let's get to some questions. Tay nine ish. <clears throat> My wife is 52, has Hashimoto's, has a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Uh, she takes armor, uh, thyroid, 120 milligrams, labs, free T3, 4.4, free T4, 0.85, insulin 2, uh, HSCRP, 0.4, A1C, 5.3, uh, free T3, thoughts, suggestions. Uh, how are her symptoms? That is that is the number one question I'm going to ask you if I see you in the clinic. How are your thyroid symptoms? And if, if, if she says, no, my symptoms are great. I feel great right now. With these labs, I would say keep doing what you're doing. Uh, her A1C is beautiful. Her HSCRP is beautiful. Uh, keep doing what you're doing unless you're having symptoms. Again, no medical advice because we don't have your full medical history. And right. This is not a clinic <clears throat> setting. This is duty. Exactly. Now, if you haven't already <clears throat> done so, hit the share button because there are people out there right now that do not know you can reverse type 2 diabetes. They don't know you can reverse fatty liver. They don't know you can reverse sleep apnea. They don't know you can re reverse IBS, IBS uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, psoriasis, eczema. They don't know that you can reverse all these things and greatly diminish the symptoms. You hitting that share button, if I've helped your health in some way, that's how you can pay me back. So please. Share this out. Oh, Lily's got her squeaky toy. Uh -oh. <laughs> Jack Taylor, well, what would you do for an enlarged prostate? I'm 53, do keto, and I'm in great shape. So first of all, get a PSA checked and any other doctor uh, testing your doctor wants to have checked. And then what I find if, uh, for many guys, when they go keto, real whole food, one ingredient keto, not keto, cookies, cakes, and pies, but meat and veg, that's what keto is. Half your plate covered with meat, half your plate covered with veg. That's keto, okay? Most men notice their, their BPH symptoms get better. Some men have to eliminate all the dairy, all the dairy, cheese, uh, heavy cream, sour cream, cream cheese, except for butter. And that's what it takes. <clears throat> so that would be your next experiment, Jack, is to do 90 days of no dairy except for butter and see how your prostate does. No, we're not getting sued. I'm saying it's, this is not medical advice because uh, people. People. You can never change the way they feel. Some people Who's forget. Saying that? Who's saying that? And I'm just here to remind them. Better let them do just what they I don't will. Know, it sounds a lot like a Vegas. You could sing that in Vegas, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. Well, hey, Chris Cooking Nashville. This is a great, great YouTube channel if you want carnivore recipes. Uh, yeah, anybody can slap some some meat in the skillet. I do that all the time. It's easy. It takes five minutes and my dinner's ready, uh, which I'm going to eat right after this live. Uh, Chris Cooking Nashville, however, puts the, how you say? Bourgeoisie. Oh, 
Honestly. Yeah, his recipes are divine. So if you're He's if a you're like genius, I'm getting kind of tired of meat and eggs. Chris Cooking Nashville, is your, he has your answers. Absolutely, he says, "Great shirt, Nisha. We love you guys here in Nashville. Thank you both for all you do." Chris Thanks, is Chris. a part of our community yes, as well. Absolutely. Uh, this is from Elemental Life. Thank you, Elemental Life. Holly, Holly, yes. Hey, Holly. Pickles was the cat we had. It looks a lot Pickles, like that's right. Yes, yes. Holly's been yes. around. She's an OG. We think this is Pickles' granddaughter because she literally looks just like it. Mm -hmm. uh, Carney Gal. Carney Gal. Hey, you two. Does is sending hair follicles sent to a lab to see if you have food aversions accurate? Uh, my 12 year old grandson is having a horrible time and has a list of dozens of things he should avoid, like no, no egg yolks, but the whites are okay. That's like the opposite. This, of this is foolishness. Yeah. The, any kind of food sensitivity testing, even with blood work that's <laughs> checking IgG and IgM, is a complete and utter waste of time and money. Uh, and it gives you no useful information. Okay. Uh, checking food sensitivities with hair follicles, <laughs> foolishness, complete and utter waste of money. Okay. Eliminating now, diet. Now, this portion of our show is brought to you by AG1. No, it's not. AG1 is a complete and utter waste of your money. It what is dried up, dehydrated, uh, ground up vegetables and fruits. It is a waste of money. Oh, cat. Ow. Thank you. <laughs> that has nothing to do with what she right. said. I know, I know. But it, it's just as foolish as. So to answer your question, the best thing to do is do an elimination diet. Even if he's 12 years old, you can still do that. Keto is a version of an elimination diet yep. just to see where his sensitivities truly lie. Mm -hmm. Keto eliminates all sugar. It eliminates all grains and it eliminates all vegetable seed oils. And for about 70% of the adult population in modern society, just eliminating those three things. I did it the German way. Just eliminating those three things will fix your metabolic problems. But some people have to go even further. Yeah, good question. Penelope. I am OMAD carnivore. Stands for one meal a day. Oh, we're having a dog cat fight. <laughs> My blood ketones average four. To 5.5. Okay. Um, my understanding that this is therapeutic ketosis <clears throat> as opposed to dietary ketosis. What is the difference and how does it impact health and weight loss? Yeah. So this, uh, if you needed therapeutic keto for some medical condition, <clears throat> then you would track your ketones using a blood ketone tracker, not urine. And you would try to keep it higher like this. Uh, this is in no way dangerous for anybody. Uh, human beings since the beginning of time have been in and out of ketosis several times a day. This is nothing to worry about, nothing to, that's dangerous for you at all. Um, many people think that the deeper you are in ketosis, the fat, the faster you're burning and metabolizing fat. That may or may not be true. Um, but you don't have to be in this deep of a ketosis to reap the benefits. Also, it's not dangerous to be in this deep of a ketosis. Hope that answers your question, Penelope. MC, my dad started radiation for prostate cancer besides PhD. Any diet feed time suggestions for this? Also, best way to quickly relieve constipation. Yeah. So if he's having trouble with constipation, carnivore, fatty meat carnivore. Also, that's going to starve the cancer of as much sugar as possible. OK, there's still a little bit of sugar that occurs in the berries and the vegetables of keto. And so if he's already been diagnosed and he's being treated, I'd say fatty meat carnivore. Uh, and then also don't forget to intermittent fast. Uh, uh, many oncologists, if you say the word fasting, they're like, no, because they have good reason for saying that because many times people on chemo and radiation lose weight like crazy. It's very hard for them to keep weight on. But also we know that having lots of extra fat on your body is not doesn't help you fight cancer at all. Right. You don't want to lose your bone and muscle, but you definitely want to be getting rid of fat. Absolutely. That's what I would recommend. Not medical advice. Sophia, that's for you. Sophia, keto for three years, having last several days more foamy or bubbles in my pee. Thought it would be thoughts to what could be causing. No idea. Any number of things could be causing this. This may be a sign of a problem or this could be completely normal. Uh, the, I'll tell you, as a doctor, I've actually looked into this before. 
the most common reason for noticing foamy urine you know what it is soap in the toilet soap in the toilet you clean the toilet and you didn't you flushed it once but that's not enough times to get all the soap out if you pee in that toilet immediately after it'll foam up and it'll look like you've got kidney failure. but if you're concerned go to your doctor yeah. get a urinalysis yeah. they're not super expensive and just see yeah. if something's going but i'll on. tell you sophia there's nothing about a ketogenic diet that's going to harm your kidneys in fact it's very kidney protective Good question. Mark, hey guys, my dad is dipping his toes into carnivore. He's still eating, drinking carbs, although less than before. Doc wants him to take blood pressure meds. Can you convince him to go full carnivore? Um, so Mark's dad, how you doing? Say hi to Mark's dad. Hi, Mark's dad. Hi. So Mark loves you. And I'm sure you have other family members that love you as well. And they'd like to keep you around for many years to come. The worse your diet is, on average, odds are the quicker you're going to die. And not only that, but the less fun your death will be, the less quick it will be, the more likely you're going to be in a nursing home. Misha was a, a nurse in the nursing home for many years, and she can tell you some horror stories that will make you definitely never drink carbs again and probably not eat them either. Okay. A carnivore diet is a proper human diet. <clears throat> try it for 90 days. Just listen to Mark. I know you used to change his dirty little diaper. I know. I know. It's hard to take what he says seriously. I mean, look at it. I'm just kidding, Mark. But Mark's right. Try it. Just try it for 90 days just to humor him because then at the end of that 90 days, you can say, Mark, you dummy. That didn't help a thing. Or, or it turns out you'll have to admit that Mark was right. Or... If going full carnivore sounds extreme, you can just stop. You can do the switcheroo. You can stop drinking regular soda and switch over to diet soda, which is not perfect, but still better and a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Take the buns off your burgers, still yep. eat the tomatoes and get some sugar-free ketchup. Yep. Start small and just get there when you get there. Yep. It's still going to be an improvement over eating burgers with the buns, eating five or drinking five sodas a day with all the sugar in there. Make the switch. Do yep. switches. Make yep. replacements. There's so many alternatives now. When we yep. first started doing keto, the all the keto products were few, far between, and they tasted mm -hmm. like crap. Now there's so many yep. to choose from if they're within your budget as a tool <clears throat> to get you to the whole food PhD. But if Mark's dad is anything like my dad, then he would love to prove Mark wrong. And so do 90 days of carnivore and prove him wrong. <clears throat> I think that'd be awesome. Meraki, soothing vibes. Dr. Barry, I went from an A1C of 10.6 to 5.5. Triglycerides from 1,009 down to 143 in one month uh, and running two miles a day. Thank you so much. God bless wow. you. That's a huge, this is, this is atypical results. I've never seen an A1C go from 10.6 to 5.5. My gosh. In a month. That's yeah. But now definitely your trigs can do that. If you, you can do it that fast by going carnivore. Uh, but A1C, that's a that's a huge jump. Huzzah. Shirley, two months carnivore, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, bits of cheese and coffee. <clears throat> Autoimmune hepatitis test results, ALT 73, AST 52, GGT 151, Alphos 203, all up considerably. Um, so it's time to cut out the cheese. Uh, plus or minus coffee, maybe, maybe not. Um, these results uh, that you gave me are just generalized uh, liver numbers. They're not autoimmune specific. Uh, you've been two months. Yeah. So we recommend 90 days for a reason, because sometimes it takes that long for your liver to kind of get in the groove and really start to calm down. Now, if you've already, if you already have an autoimmune liver condition, then you have reason for these numbers to be elevated. But I predict if you'll continue carnivore that, and I would wean down the cheese, that you're going to notice when you recheck these in three months, they will be lower. And I want you to report back, even if I'm wrong. CJ, swelling, tachycardia, high blood pressure without metformin, everything good went on it for insulin resistance, plus non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. What's going on with me? I have no idea, CJ, if you're keto, switch to carnivore and do 90 days of carnivore, uh, and then report back. Uh, the metformin definitely can help with many things, but I've never seen uh, metformin help with edema or tachycardia. Uh, 
uh, or really high blood pressure. If you're truly eating a ketogenic or a carnivore diet, I've not seen it do any of those things. So I'm guessing you're not currently eating keto or carnivore. Those of you who are new, make sure to say hi in the comments to our Blue Wrench PhD coaches, those blue names with a blue wrench beside of them. They are knighted and they are amazing. And if you see yes. them answer your question, what just, just happened? happened? I don't know. <laughs> they are all uh, hey, Primal hey. Health certified health coaches. And Dr. Berry certified. And Dr. Berry certified PhD coaches. And they are also coaches inside of our, our private community. If you want to become a member of the private community, it's phdhealth.community. Give a love, shout out to our coaches in the comments. Yes. If you have worked with them and you love them, show them some love. Absolutely. Nick, what are your thoughts on whey protein on a carnivore diet? As a truck driver, sometimes I just need to get out of a pinch. I use just a bit of milk and unadulterated whey protein concentrate. Thanks. <laughs> you should probably try a beef isolate protein yeah. if you're trying to be as clean as possible. Equip makes a really good yeah. one. I think Keto Chow actually has a beef isolate protein yeah. now. Many um, people, as adults, are sensitive to the whey protein and it, it, it's not going to be an anaphylactic shock situation it's not going to be oh i drink a whey protein shake and broke out in hives it's not going to be that kind of sensitivity it's going to be gut issues joint issues skin issues maybe even you'll notice your mental faculties are dulled a bit i'm not a big fan of whey protein except for uh small humans who are under the age of five they need a good daily source of whey and casein but most but not adult, from a protein shake right that's right from their mama's boobie but most adult humans do better if they just eat protein from meat and eggs instead of drinking a protein shake but in an occasional pinch i don't think it's a terrible thing those of you who are joining the phd community when you join i want you to <clears> immediately <throat> you'll be brought to this section it says help desk at the top that first video it says welcome to the community video tour if you will just watch that nine minute video, it will answer all of your questions yeah. and set you up to be ready to take advantage of all the things that we do inside of the community. So please make sure you go to the help desk and watch that tutorial video. It's only nine minutes long. Mm. It really shows you all the things yeah. and how to do. Them. There's a ton of stuff you can do in the community, but if you don't watch Nisha's video, you won't know all the, the cool stuff you can do. What does your tattoo say? Excelsior means onward and upward. Onward I have a upward. whole video on my YouTube channel about my tattoo. Um, Duane, I'm, I am doing good on carnivore and have a question about my cat. Is it safe to feed my cat raw ground beef? I am not a veterinarian. I am a medical doctor. Uh, but I know because I got my undergraduate degree in animal biology that all cats are obligate carnivores. Any of you guys who are feeding your cat kibble, um, that's unintentional cat abuse. Stop that, please. Your cat needs to be eating meat, fish, uh, and egg yolks, seafood. That's what cats are supposed to eat. They're not supposed to eat kibble. I know uh, Purina, they have the cutest cat food commercials in the world. It's it's cat abuse. Even I'm assuming if you, don't mean you already know that since you're asking this yeah. question. Our cats get fed ground beef, raw ground beef. Um, on occasion, they also like chicken, sardines. Sometimes they'll eat sardines. They're very bougie cats. Yeah. They're very picky. But also anything that I accidentally leave out to thaw. Mm -hmm. I can't eat. tell you how many times they've <clears throat> torn into a packet of raw ground beef that she's thawing, and she'll forget and leave it overnight because they're nocturnal. Also true for cats. And we get up the next morning, and a quarter of the two pound stick is so gone. So then they get the rest. Yeah, then they get another big hunk because she's not going to eat after the cat. Yeah, meat is fine for cats. That is their preferred food. Mona, Dr. Barry, please help me understand uh, gliosis and encephalomalacia. What can this rare condition cause me down the line? Uh, stroke, brain cancer, seizure, not too much info out there. There's actually a great um, entry on Wikipedia about encephalomalacia and gliosis. You can read that. Uh, there are many uh, topics I would not recommend Wikipedia for, but it's great for stuff like this. And you can do some base, baseline research because you need to know everything about these conditions, Mona. Use the internet machine. Do your research. 
Ketogenic Susan, thanks, Dr. Barry and Nisha, for all you do. I got to talk to my middle school class about my carnivore house. That is amazing. Excellent. Excellent. Love, Excellent. If you're in the group, please send me a message about how that went down. I'd love to hear more about yep, that. Yep. And I think there's a lot of our tribe members who would love to go speak to a junior high class or even a high school class about a proper human diet. Yep. That's perfect. I love that. Vishnu. Just to clarify, charcuterie, yeah, chorizo, serrano, prosciutto, ham, pepperoni. I'm a PhD member, but like to ask here, ah, thank you so much, Vishnu. Yeah, yeah, we we know what charcuterie boards are. We it's love them. Mostly, so what he's asking is, is that okay to eat because yes. they're processed. Yes. Some of them have, you know, yes. sugar in the curing process. Depending on how severe your disease is, how many autoimmune, you know, some people with severe autoimmune diseases need to worry about that sort of thing. But yeah. if you're seeing success and you're reaching your goals, eating chorizo and prosciutto, which I love prosciutto, mm -hmm. pepperoni, ham, those types yes. of things. Just look at the back and the ingredients and the carb count and try to get the best that you can. Processed meat has been unjustifiably demonized. There's nothing wrong with processed meat, okay? Just because high ultra processed food is bad for you. Just because the word processed in processed meat rhymes with the word processed in ultra processed foods, doesn't make it bad, okay? Bacon is good for you. Sausage is good for you. Chorizo, serrano, prosciutto, as long as the ingredients are good, they are health foods. Now, in many cases, like chorizo, sausage, uh, stuff like that, they'll actually put organ meat in and, because they don't think you'll know. It actually makes it a superfood. Stop being afraid of processed meat. Always read the ingredients. If it's got too much sugar, put it back. And if you don't feel well on it, then stop eating there it. There you go. Do your, to your body. Do your self-experiment. Sonia, 55 carnivore, but not lately. Just got stupid. It happens. happens. Gallbladder out on February this year. Huge stone blocking. Uh, Having horrible bile come up and very nauseous. Burping, et cetera. Please help. Tutka. Tutka. That's a medication. Will I yeah. ever level? Yeah. It, so what's going to happen is that your hepatic, uh, ducks will take on a bile storage capacity. Your gallbladder doesn't make bile. It was just storing and concentrating the bile. And your hepatic ducts will actually take on that, uh, at least partially take on that role. Now, you signed a release with your surgeon saying that you understand that you might have indigestion and diarrhea for the rest of your life after you have your gallbladder taken out. And a lot of people don't realize what they're citing. And so, yeah, you might have gut problems for the rest of your life, but the vast majority of people, after a few months on carnivore, all this levels out and they do just great. We're at the halfway mark. If you haven't hit that thumbs up button, hit, hit the it. thumbs up. It hit the heart. fireworks. It's lots of fun. Fireworks? Yeah. I don't believe her. Yeah. Try and see no, if it, it does. Totally does. See if it does. Uh, share with a friend, with a loved one, or if you have your doctor's email, maybe share it with them too. Ah, Andrea, I was. Following y'all for a couple of years and lost 40 pounds, bizarre, in the past. Moved to New Orleans and fell off because of the beignets, I know. Mm. Docs did go whole food, plant-based, and wrecked my hormones. Yeah. Now I'm back here. Should I do 90 days carnivore or ease in with keto again? Uh, had low blood sugar on carnivore. I would do what a month of ketovore, so... Very close to carnivore, but with some low inflammation, low carb vegetables. You can still use your sauces and seasonings as long as they're clean, just to like ease the transition. But other than that, there's nothing wrong with it. If you just wanted to go carnivore, you could try that. And if you don't feel well, then bounce back to yep. keto. Form. Yep. And you can actually bounce from keto to carnivore, keto or carnivore. You can <clears throat> go in and out. You don't have to be strict carnivore. This is not a religion. I will make the point of like because you said you wrecked your hormones make sure you're getting plenty of good animal fats in because mm. that will help regulate mm -hmm. your hormones Absolutely. if you want to know more about that dr elizabeth bright has a book and, a, and she's done hundreds of interviews on youtube so dr elizabeth bright focuses on women's health and hormones yep dark sky i'm 25 and have had psoriatic arthritis for four years and also brain fog at what point does brain inflammation cause the death of neurons mm -hmm. Um, I think the answer to that is nobody knows for sure. The only way we could know that for sure is to dig into somebody's brain and put uh, implants in there and then just watch them for months and years. Uh, all we can do is, is guesstimate this sort of thing as opposed to simply neuronal impairment, which can be reversed. And so I would also tell you, Dark Sky, you have stem cells in your brain 
Okay. We used to not believe that. We used to believe that you were born with all the neurons you're ever going to have. This is not true. You can make new, new neurons. It's slow. It takes a while. And it, it's not nearly as quickly as like making a new part of your epithelial lining if you have a, some problem and it slips off. You make that within days. Neurons take a lot longer, but it absolutely is possible. And that's why it's so important for you to stick to a proper human diet as strictly as you can for as long as you can, because that's going to help protect you from the autoimmune issues and also protect you from the brain fog as well. Have you interviewed Dr. Elizabeth Bright? On no, we've, channel? we've set it up three All times right. and something always comes up. Oh, I would love gosh, to have her on the channel. Her absolutely. Her. Yes. Elizabeth, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> Elizabeth. Lisa, thoughts on glutamine for dam damnable sugar cravings. What do you think about glutamine? So glutamine is an amino acid that kind of has a sweet taste. And for some people, I think this is one of many hacks that when they're getting off the standard American high carb sugar diet, they can use something like this as kind of a temporary crutch to kind of get through the roughest part. But I don't recommend anybody on a proper human diet long term be eating sweet things all the time. You don't need dessert with every meal. You don't need something sweet every day. You don't need something sweet in every cup of coffee you drink. That's what you were taught by the big food manufacturers. And that's you're basically mimicking that past unhealthy diet. Uh, glutamine's way the hell better or less bad than sugar. And even aspartame and saccharin and uh, Splenda. But I would love it if you just kept kind of even weaning that down. You don't need something sweet all the time. I don't know much about that. <laughs> Frank, why is my blood sugar not below 100 after two months on strict keto? Well, many people's blood sugar is not below 100 after years on strict keto. That's not the goal. The goal is to have an A1C that's normal and to have a fasting insulin that's normal, to have an HDL cholesterol that's normal, and to have triglycerides that are normal. And finally, to have a high sensitivity CRP, HSCRP, that's normal, okay? There are many carnivores that will their blood sugar will get up to 110, but it's not glycating. And the way we know it's not glycating is because when they check their A1C, it's beautiful. Does that make sense? Uh, if you're eating a proper human diet, you don't have to track your blood sugar anymore. Just every three months, check your A1C and fasting insulin. Unless you're on a medication, obviously. Serena, I, hey, Dr. Barry and Nisha, I haven't investigated it myself, but saw a thyroid expert talking about leothyroid. Yeah, that's T, that's free that T, that's just T3 only. Oh, okay, gotcha. And uh, some few patients need that in addition to T4. The vast majority, I'd say 90% of patients don't need that. Some so few people do. see a real improvement when they add in the T3. So just talk to your yep. provider about giving it, you know, a few months and seeing how you feel, rechecking your labs, but track your symptoms when you introduce the new medication, especially when it comes to thyroid, because your symptoms really matter. Absolutely. Things are getting worse or getting better. Absolutely. Symptoms are a huge deal that are often ignored by doctors. Drew, is there any, is there any condition you have not seen carnivore cure? Yes, many. I've been keto for the past four years and carnivore beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for a month. And my parathyroid hormone is still 462 feels like surgery is my only option. Yes. And this is one of many conditions. There's nothing magic about a proper human diet. Well, <clears throat> there's nothing magic about a proper human diet. There's nothing magic about beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Okay. You're still a human being. You can still have medical conditions that you need medical treatment for. I'm a big fan of the practice of medicine. Okay. A lot of people think I'm anti doctor, anti medicine. No, I'm just anti give somebody a bunch of pills and manage their chronic progressive diseases. This is a condition you need to see a, a, a surgeon for. Yeah, you're going to have to have surgery to get this fixed most likely. Okay. Marnie Mack. Hey, Marnie. Hey, thanks to the PhD. I'm here cleaning out my closet of two big clothes. Again, love you both. Have fun shopping. Non-scale victory. Huzzah. We've had people have to buy new shoes because their feet are not Long. swollen anymore. Yeah. We've had people have to get their wedding band resized because they're not all puffy and swollen anymore. Uh, we've had several people have to change their their prescription for their glasses because their vision improved. Not everybody, but many people. Thank you, Aqua. Rushman, what would you recommend to boost metabolism? 
exercise instead of the whole eat small portions often myth yeah eating small portions is dumb that's never going to help anybody achieve any goal whatsoever if you want to rev up your metabolism you're going to eat lots of fatty red meat lots of eggs with the yolk and you're going to lift heavy things you're going to run very fast you're going to swim fast cycle fast and you're even going to do things fast in the bedroom that's what gets your metabolism revved up <clears throat> i want to pull a question from the comment all right yeah quick. yeah absolutely uh, Jen Jinx says so many different diet advices around for a beginner. It's so confusing and overwhelming. Yeah, I I get you. But listen, nearly every single person, be they doctor, nutritionalist, a dietitian, nurse practitioner, nurse, or just average human being on the street, we can all agree that eating highly processed, lots of chemicals, preservatives, tons of sugar. Things that are obviously unhealthy, you need to take those out, right? Yep. Yep. Seed oils, limiting them, that's probably a good idea. Stop drinking all the sodas, pops, cookies, cakes, candy. Energy drinks. All of those things. If you just stopped doing that and only shopped on the outside aisle, if you made that simple adjust adjustment, we would both be happy as that, mm. as that being a first step in the right mm -hmm. direction. Absolutely. So don't get overwhelmed by all the labels. All right, focus on eating good nutrient dense foods that's meat low carb vegetables maybe some fruit if you can tolerate it and and focus on that yeah. don't get so overwhelmed by the minutia and the weeds absolutely keep it simple three big steps eliminate all sugar from your diet eliminate all grains from your diet eliminate all vegetable seed oils from your diet just those three things that leaves thousands of things you can eat Try that for 90 days and see mm -hmm. if you don't feel and look better. And cut out the grains and the gluten. That was, that, that was pretty important. Too. Kelly, I'm in the green zone on all blood tests and lost 75 pounds, but doc is only focused on my 358 LDL. My trigs are 92, which is great. HDL is 78, which is great. A1C is 5.3, which is great. I told him I'm fine. What's up? Sandra, 55-year-old female on HRT, working with new doctor, two years postmenopausal, two months carnivore, month one spotting, month two spotting this month, full life period, liver cleansing, upping estrogen, waiting on labs. I'm worried. Yeah, so it's very common for women who are previously eating the, just the junk diet. When they start eating keto, ketovore, carnivore, they, if they've just been menopausal, for a year or two, it's not unheard of for them to start having periods again. It's like it you literally age in reverse. You become physiologically younger. And your body's like, oh man, there's so much nutrition around. Let's see, we might be able to knock off one more baby here. <laughs> again, I recommend Dr. Elizabeth Bright for mm -hmm. all things women, menopausal, yep. postmenopausal, yep. premenopausal. That's really her niche. Yep. And she loves to talk about it too. So yep. And I absolutely go see your doc and get some labs just to make sure. Maybe a pelvic ultrasound. Uh, don't waste any money on liver cleanses if that's what you're asking. But I think absolutely eating keto, ketovore, carnivore moves your hormones in a youthful direction. And for many women, that means that that spotty, irregular, I'm almost done with my period, turns back into an every 28-day period again. Char, let me pull another okay. one. Can you respond to the idea or theory that too much protein turns to fat? So Dr. Barry just did an interview with Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, mm -hmm. what, last week? Yep, and that's week. on here, this on YouTube. YouTube channel. You can go look it up, and they speak extensively for an hour about protein goals, optimum protein, too much protein, not enough protein. It's all about protein, so I encourage you to go watch that interview. Yep. And then I've also had several conversations with Professor Ben Bigman on my YouTube channel where we talk about this specifically. Uh, protein is good for you. Protein is not bad for you. Chris, ketones in pee, no UTI, STD, pee burns, dehydrated. Uh, I don't know. So your doctor. The motivational misfit, carnivore for one year, HDL 76, Triggs 43, uh, insulin 6.9. That's pretty darn good. My A1C has gone from 4.8 to 5.5, still normal. You should not be concerned. <clears throat> An A1C of 5.5 is better than 90% of the adult U.S. population. Uh, but Dr. Berry, is there another test that he can mm -hmm. have to check that may yeah. give him a little bit yeah. more clearance? If anybody on carnivore or ketovore have noticed that your A1C is creeping up like this, but still normal or just a little high, ask your doctor to order a glycated 
albumin. Okay, because we know there are many things that can make your red blood cells live longer or shorter lives. And it's postulated that a proper human diet causes your red blood cells to live longer. Therefore, they have longer to glycate, which might give you a, you a falsely high A1C. So get a glycated albumin check. Have you done an interview with the cardiologist yet, or is that on the docket? Which, which one? I don't know. Can't remember. Ford Brewer? Who did you like? Lady Ali? Lately. Lately, I, I <laughs> was interviewed by Dr. Ford. Oh, Brewer. okay. Is it yeah. on his channel? It's not up yet, but it's going to be on his YouTube channel okay. in a few days. But for those interested in learning more about keto, keto or carnivore, because lots of cardiologists are like, this is going to kill you. You're going to have a heart attack. There are cardiologists out there who support this yep. way of eating. One of them is Dr. Nadir Ali, who is going to be in my Board certified life. cardiologist. He's amazing. And then yep. Dr. Dr. Brett Shear, Brett Shear, board certified cardiologist. Uh, and then uh, Ford Brewer is a prevention medicine specialist, but he does tons of work with cardiac patients. Uh, many, many internal medicine doctors, uh, a cardiothoracic surgeon. How about that? Board certified, Dr. Philip Ovadia. He recommends this. Uh, it, it, there's so many doctors coming on board. It's becoming more and more. It, it's getting to the point where if any, if a doctor says keto is dangerous or carnivore is dangerous, they're just being silly little doctors. Well, like they just literally, are, they're being ignorant. They don't know. And instead of no, because they've been told by the powers that be that mm -hmm. are their bosses essentially, and they here's the standard of care that doctors are supposed to go by. You. 10 years ago, we're spouting that same advice. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Like, I don't think you were silly. I think you were I was ignorant. informed. I was ignorant and at that, that time. That doesn't mean that your doctor hates you or is trying to do harm to you. They just don't know because yeah. how could they know what they were being told is the complete opposite until you start I feel like at this point, if you haven't heard about keto or carnivore and you're a doctor, you may be living under a rock. Just because they've heard of it doesn't mean that they don't think. And you haven't looked into it at this point. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm the only person supporting doctors here. I'm the nurse. I should be the one like doctors are annoying and stupid because I've worked with them and most of the time they are, but I give them the benefit of it. Yes. Music RN Diana carnivore for nine months, lost 25 pounds. The ketosis is now from low to not in ketosis. Recently had RSV, sinus infection, antibiotics, any connection. Yes. All those things will kick you out of ketosis. Absolutely. Sean, what is your experience with bone marrow cancer using carnivore? I have a friend who called me this afternoon to tell me he was just diagnosed. So any solid tumor cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, any cancer that's a solid tumor, 100% high fat carnivore is what you need to do to, to help your cancer specialist treat and beat that cancer. Now, bone cancers are different. They're not a tumor. OK, it's actually an abnormal growth. In, of, uh, bone, of blood cells inside the bone marrow. There's no indication that a carnivore diet is in any way bad for somebody with bone cancer. Uh, I would I would 100%, if, if this were my brother or sister, I would say 100%, you need to go carnivore right now. Kel, can you get kidney stones from electrolytes? Usually they're no. more calcium based, yeah. most kidneys. 80% stones. are calcium mm -hmm. oxalate. So the thing you need really need to watch out for is oxalates in your diet. Mm -hmm. And then if you're taking a calcium supplement, I would highly recommend you stop that. Priscilla, thank you very much. Priscilla. Priscilla. Thank you, Scylla. Elemental Life. Would you have RFK Jr. on to talk about PhD plus chronic disease? Absolutely. If you know RFK Jr., I'd absolutely love to have him on this channel. I don't agree with all his politics, but I agree with a great many things that he I don't agree with anybody. Yeah. Same. <laughs> There's no one out there that I'm like, you know what? I agree with everything they say. Yeah. No one, not even this dude. Right. I'm married to That's him. right. She, but I mean, talking to a Kennedy wasn't awesome. Yeah. That'd be cool. Amazing. I'd love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have a connection? <laughs> Greg, we don't. blessings to you and your family. Thank Thanks, you, Greg. Greg. Thank you. We love the blessings. JM, my plasma vitamin C uh, from a blood test is seven micromolars per liter. Carnivores need less, but shouldn't my levels still be in the normal range? Uh, do I need a supplement? And now, so actually, Nisha and I had all of our labs checked. And, and I had my labs checked after about three years carnivore. My vitamin C level was still normal. This last time I had it checked, both my vitamin C and her vitamin C are a little bit below normal. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we actually talk about this. We're going to be releasing that video on Nisha's channel where we go over all of our lab work. I don't know. Should I? What do you guys, you want to see our lab? <laughs> We've been promising this for three minutes. I don't know. And we're so I'm busy with download it download and let you put it on your channel. I don't want to see that mess on my channel. You don't want to see that? Okay. <laughs> in the next day or two, leave it be on Nisha's channel. So go ahead and subscribe. I think to I might send it to the NEISHA just in case. and Or otherwise, it'll be on my channel. <laughs> it wasn't like mine were fine. I'm not going to take a vitamin <laughs> C supplement. Uh, we always grow peppers and tomatoes and herbs in the garden. And I'm just going to start eating a quarter of a green pepper a week. Also, we had these labs drawn in December, which Feb not February. November and December are when I really let things a little mm. creep in more because yeah. it's the holiday, it's the harvest, yada, 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 yada. So I would like to have them done when I'm really strict, which mm -hmm. is like the height of summer. Mm -hmm. And see how they yeah. look. And I there. haven't. Uh, it's same for me. I was eating more just easy stuff. I hadn't been eating as much liver as I normally eat, which and is cheese. a good source. More way more cheese. And well, liver is a great source of vitamin C. And I'm probably going to just bump up my liver again and uh, eat more liver. And then also probably eat a quarter of a green bell pepper. Amber once a said, week. leave Nisha's channel for the fun stuff. Right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Priscilla, so I started keto 11 days ago and my high blood pressure went down from 165 over 113 to 122 over 83 in two weeks. I just started carnivore today. And for some people, the only reason that they have high blood pressure, your doctor said, oh, you have essential hypertension or idiopathic. The only reason you have high blood pressure is because you're eating enough carbohydrates to keep your insulin high which causes you to hold unhealthy fluid, a.k.a. edema. And as soon as you cut the carbs, your insulin comes back down to normal. You pee all that water off and your blood pressure does this exact thing. Now, not everybody, but about 80% of people who are taking blood pressure pills, if you eat low carb enough to get your insulin level down under 10, you won't need the blood pressure medicine anymore. Not everybody, but most people. Jeff, 11 days post- uh oh appendectomy i ended up with a dvt in my left calf dang it jeff uh doctor put me on eloquence for the dvt i feel lethargic and blah any advice or suggestions Jeff? you're going to feel like crap for a while eloquence can also have that effect there are other medications besides eloquence if you just don't start feeling any better go back and see your doc and say hey i can't take this put me on something else keep in mind jeff that that dvt in your in your calf it's socked in. It's never going anywhere. Okay. The, the, the eloquis, the reason you're taking that is so you don't make any new clots. That clot's already fibrosed and that vein will just close down and go away. A lot of doctors don't explain that to patients. They're afraid that that clot's still sitting there just waiting for you to miss one dose and then it's going to break free and kill your ass. That's how it feels. But that's not true. That's <laughs> you're taking the blood thinner to prevent new uh, clots. And so most doctors, if you, you this is post-op, so you had a reason for it, you'll probably only take blood thinners for a year. Then you'll be able to stop the blood thinner. So talk to your doc if the, if the lethargy doesn't get any better. Thank you very much, Paula. Joe Mello, what would you recommend for a person who has been on the carnivore diet for four months and has had their blood work come back with elevated liver enzymes approximately mm. at 150? Yeah, you, so get a GGT. Uh, if your alkaline phosphatase was elevated, get a fractionated alkaline phosphatase. Get a liver ultrasound or a CAT scan of your liver, okay, and make sure nothing else is going on. Continue carnivore and recheck in three months. Almost at the top of the hour. Let's get as many questions. Sherry on a low carb journey. Join me with a great big huzzah for Mr. Sherry on a low carb journey, aka Jim. He's lost up 170 pounds. I think he deserves that. Huzzah! What a job, Jim. We are so proud of you. And I know your wife is so proud of you. Jim's too. kicking ass over That's here. Amazing. Keep it up. Kim. Kia. Oh, sorry. Kia. Does black coffee break a fast? Black coffee does have a few calories, but how come people are saying it's acceptable? Yeah. For most people, it doesn't raise your insulin enough to meaningfully break the physiological fast that we're talking about. But I personally think that for some people, maybe five or 10 percent of people, if they drink enough coffee a lot a day, that can be enough carbs 
to, to raise your insulin enough to effectively break the fast. You have one or two cups of coffee. I used to drink a whole pot at work. Mm -hmm. Well, I same, brew a pot of same, coffee. Those 12 same. hour shifts in L and D. Yeah, <laughs> I so much coffee. Heather, hi. Would you talk about carnivore and the gut microbiome? This is my ND's only concern with my diet. So, yes, there are hundreds and hundreds of carnivores have sent poop samples off to the microbiome people. And I haven't seen a single one yet that came back and said, oh, gosh, your microbiome is effed up. You, this is terrible. Oh, my God. You've killed off all your gut bacteria. Even though we're taught you must eat fiber to feed your bacteria. Uh, every single carnivore's microbiome testing I've seen is very diverse, very healthy. They have no problems at all. Your, your gut microbiome does not need fiber. It does not need prebiotics. It does not need probiotics. It's just fine. Eat a proper human diet and it will equilibrate to exactly what the ratios of all the different bacteria you need and you'll be healthy and so will your bacteria. I would love to see Dave Feldman do some research on the gut microbiome when it comes to yeah. each yeah. sector of yeah. and, diet oh, it's, uh, yeah, and act absolutely. activity level mm -hmm. as well. Sleep, because I feel like the gut doesn't just depend on what you put inside of it, but how you're living your life. 100%. Are you moving your body? Are you getting yes. adequate rest? Yes. Are, how are you managing <clears throat> your stress? Yep. I feel like that matters too. And let me say this for all 5,600 people watching. If any guru out there says, look, you need more of this bacteria, less of this bacteria in your gut. You need this probiotic. It's proven. All that's bullshit. We currently don't know anything about the, the human microbiome. Now, I predict that it's going to turn out that the gut microbiome is a huge deal. Very important. And we, in 10 years from now, maybe seven, if we let AI get on the case, we'll, we'll be able to give recommendations and say, oh, your formicutes is too high. We need to do this. Currently, if anybody out there says, oh, you need to take this supplement because I checked your poop and blah, blah, blah. No. Nobody, the leading experts on the gut microbiome in the world will tell you that we currently don't know shit about shit. They, will, literally. they literally will tell you that. <laughs> and they'll say maybe one day, and we do think it's very important, but we currently have no recommendations because even the leading researchers in the world will, will admit immediately we do not know enough about the microbiome to make any recommendations at all. So what makes you think that Instagram boy knows enough if the leading researchers in the world don't know enough? What I say, N equals one, that applies. You need to do some research on yourself. If you do an elimination diet, 90 days of carnivore, cut out, cut the cheese. Cut the cheese. I'll cut the bad cheese and then reintroduce them. You're going to see how your gut microbiome mm -hmm. re reacts mm -hmm. to those specific, if you reintroduce them properly, which yep. we really talk about a lot in the group, just so you know, and if keep you want to do that. Keep in mind, millions and millions of humans all over the world for millennia have eaten just meat. And they didn't die. They actually were very healthy and vigorous and virile and potent. And they reproduced. So anybody who says you must have fiber or you'll die, that's just dumb on its face. Shell, what type 2 diabetic medication can I take besides metformin that won't cause low blood sugar? None of them. Berberine, you can try that. That's essentially over-the-counter metformin. And please don't say proper human diet. I'm trying, but metformin isn't nice to me. I understand, Jill. Uh, all of the, the pill form type 2 diabetic medications and most of the injectables, they work by making your pancreas secrete more insulin. And so it, you run the risk of having dangerously low blood sugars from taking those medications. Okay. Uh, metformin is really the only exception. So try berberine. Uh, from a reputable company, maybe you won't have the same symptoms with that. And keep doing your proper human diet. I promise you it's going to be worth it. Preston, hey, doc, thank you for all you do. I have bipolar, so I'm curious of your opinion on carnivore versus keto to treat it. Also, should I avoid modified Atkins approach to treat it? Thank you again. If you're trying to treat any mental health condition, my very first recommendation to you is going to be high-fat carnivore. And for at least 90 days, that needs to be your default high fat carnivore. Cook it in bacon grease, put some butter on top of it. Eat all the fat that comes with the meat. Eat all the yolks. And then at the end of that 90 days, then you can reassess. And then you can start to experiment with ketovore 
little onion, little garlic, see what happens. And watch your mental health very closely. But yeah, high fat carnivore, that's what I'm going to tell anybody who's trying to treat a medical or a, a mental condition with diet. That's going to be my default answer. Hey, I've seen a few of you say you're going to be in Vegas. Don't be shy. Come say hi. Yes, yes. Don't be shy. Come up and say hi. If Ask you've us been to question. Vegas, tell me the number one thing you think we should do while we're in Vegas. Susan, Dr. Barry, I'm currently on 50 milligrams low sartan for very high blood pressure. Can I still drink Element because it has potassium and low sartan uh, doesn't make potassium, but it's kind of a potassium spare. Uh, you can have one serving a day, Susan. I wouldn't use more than that without talking to your doctor. Kara May, only can sleep six hours on carnivore. Any advice? Yeah. So my first question to you, if I saw you in the office, would be during the day, like now, are you sleepy? Are you drowsy? Are you not dozing off at red lights? Um, I, I think your answer is going to be no, I'm full of energy. I feel great. Then many people only need six hours of sleep. And it's only when they discover their, their spot on the proper human diet spectrum that they can then just get six or seven. Some people do need eight, but some people get by very well on six. I'm one of these people. Six and a half hours, I'm good to go. No problems. Uh, and I think there are many other people like this as well. I could sleep for 12 hours. Not because I need it, but I just love sleeping. She loves to sleeping. sleep. She does. Thank you, Rhonda, <laughs> very much. Leroy, thank you, you two. Goal was 193 pounds from 232. I'm currently at 178 and happy. Wow, good job. Lost that in three and a half months, by the way. Dang, very nice. So I will have a slice of pizza or a naughty treat now and then for uh, and then for two months now. Still the same weight. It's time to start lifting heavy things. Leroy, you, you got it, brother. Job, All you guys listen, if you're just getting started and you're like, where do I start? Diet, fix your diet, diet, diet. Listen to Leroy. Leroy didn't even think about working out until he'd already lost 50 pounds. Now he's going to start lifting heavy things and putting on muscle and making his bones stronger. That's how you do it. Fix your diet. That's going to that's going to give you 85% of the benefits. Then you start working out. If you are a member of the PhD community, put your little bacon emoji in the comments so we can see you guys represent. And tomorrow we will be in our private Q&A just for you guys. So we're excited to do that. We're excited to talk to you guys while we're in Vegas. Yes, and meet all you guys and take an Ussie. Um, for It's five bucks a month to be a, a part of our tribe, okay? We're going to do this same exact format, and instead of 5,800 people asking questions, there will be 200, 250. So we're able to answer more questions more thoroughly. Five bucks a month, phdhealth.community, 6 p.m. Central tomorrow inside the community. We'll do this again if we, we didn't get, get to your questions. A little more tonight. detailed too, plus our coaches, they all have their mm. own specific groups inside the community that's included in your membership. Mm -hmm. They do live Q and A's. We do book clubs. Uh, we do challenges throughout the year. Mm -hmm. We um, do giveaways. What else do we do? We do well, a lot also of inside of our private group, we can talk about things that would get us banned on YouTube and on yeah, Facebook. We'll talk about more stuff in there. Yeah. You also get access to some behind the scenes content. Uh, so many people share what they eat. We love to talk about recipes. We love, love sharing wins and sharing struggles. It's 100% the main purpose of the community is so you have a place to go mm -hmm. where like-minded people are doing the same kind of stuff that you are, that are on the same path that you are, that uh, aren't going to tell you you're going to have a heart attack, right? right. Like maybe your and husband thinks that people doing is crazy. who are further maybe. down the road than you, if you're just getting started, these people have been doing this for months or years. And you can ask your beginner questions like, I don't understand net carbs or total carbs. They've already played that, that game and they know the answer and they're going to help you out. And so uh, we've got 10 primal health certified coaches in there who are also PhD certified and they're, they're ready to help you and answer your questions and help you, on your journey back to a level of health that you no longer dreamed was even possible. So for those of you who are going to hang out with us tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow. And if not, we'll be right back here next week for Monday Night Lab again on YouTube, apparently Twitter and Facebook. See ya.